Hey guys, what's happening? Welcome to this episode of Press Start TV. My name is Will. We have Nine. Hello. And Mr. Gage with us today. Hi. Gentlemen, let's talk about a couple of things today. We've got the Games of August coming out. Oh, I call uh, us gentlemen. We'll, talk, we'll be talking about that. You are gentlemen. That's a loose term. We'll be, <laughs> we'll be talking about uh, story mode. Is you, what's more important, your character or your enemy? So we'll get into that a little bit. Uh, we'll like also be talking show. about physical games versus digital games. So that's what we have in store for you today. Let's get into this. Games of August. We'll start off with Rare Replay. The Rare Replay. Uh, that's August not really fifth. one game. It's 30 that's games. 30, 30 games. <laughs> a 10,000 game is cool. Mm. Hey, so uh, we, we, we saw that at Microsoft's briefing, of course, at this year's E3, and we actually got to talk with Mr. Phil Spencer. Uh, check out that interview on YouTube, by the way. Um, at E3, he was uh, mentioning the Rare Replay and how excited he was for that. And one of the things that he brought up in that uh, interview was the fact that all those different licensing and all the different things that had to happen in order to make this game possible yeah. uh, is just insane. How many different consoles that those games came out on? Right. This is yeah. going to be a good 16 game. 16 different consoles. And it's, is, it, is it 30 bucks? It, yes, $30, $30 price point. $30, yeah. A dollar a game. So Rare, 30 years old, 30 games, 30 bucks, yeah. genius. It's genius. a triple play. Yeah, as long as it's you know not broken day one, buy it. You it know? probably There's won't no... be. Find <laughs> that rare. game, check it out, go play it. Five Nights at Freddy 4. <gasps> the last installment. The last, the final night, I think is what it's final subtitled. Final night. Yeah. Uh, now, are you, guys, are you guys fans of this? Yes, well, I, I've, I haven't played any of them yet. I've been following the game. I've I been watching played, them. I have the second one on my phone. Okay. And it scares me to death. So well, this game was supposed to come out anymore. in October on, on Halloween, <laughs> but they pushed it forward because it was ready, so it's coming out August 8th. Yeah. And then everyone who buys it is getting a free expansion on Halloween. Um, but this one doesn't play, take place in a restaurant this time. No. It's at a house. It's at the, like the in your house. supervisor's house. In Let's your see. house? No, specifically mine. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> which house might be a little creepier, I guess. Yeah, it's going to make it totally scary. I think yeah. it changes the way the game is approached. I've seen the trailer. Because in in the past you were always in the the amusement thing the Chuck e. restaurant and Chuck E. Cheese yeah sure. we'll go with that and you knew by through the cameras where things were and right. if you were in the wrong area at the wrong time you got you know this time they're coming in through closets and things yeah, like that it's, it's popping everywhere. out of nowhere it's going to be nuts cool scary Love um it. and again you're watching Press Start TV we're talking about games of August uh, Madden of course every August one of the biggest selling games every single year it comes out um, I mean people love football. Oh, yeah, I mean, what, a, what a statement. <laughs> uh, you guys love football. You, you have a team? I kind of like a foot. Well, kind of like a We football. hate your team, so we don't even talk about it. Oh, uh, whatever. I hate your team. That's so. fine. Stay over there. <laughs> be on your camera. I'll be on mine. Madden 16, they, they're focusing a lot more on offense this year. Last year, you know, Brian Murray told us about the, their focus on defense. and switched gears this year, and they wanted to get the player more options for They do that, that passing. every year, though. Every year, it's a switch. I, I, I like that. I think they need to change it up, and, and obviously it's going to look a little more pretty and that kind of thing. Madden looks pretty good, uh, of course, so that's coming out. Mm -hmm. It's going to be huge. Super um, excited. Gears of War Ultimate Edition? <gasps> yes. Yeah. You excited about this? Uh, yeah, I am. I like Gears of War. Uh, specifically, I like the first one. This is the best one to play. Nice. Um, the online, everyone's really better than me, but I, I play it for the story anyway. Um, yeah. $40 price point for, for 40 bucks. I, if it was 60 I wouldn't buy it. 40 bucks, I'll take a shot at it. I think 40 bucks for remakes is, is really a solid, fair. solid, fair price. Yep. And you want to gear people up for the next uh, installment of the game. Uh, gear. Did you, did you do that on purpose? Uh, <laughs> uh, puns, people, puns. All right, uh, Disney Infinity 3.0. Woohoo! I this don't have the fun. money. This looks fun. It, it, it is fun. Yeah, the games so fun. are fun. I'll I, say this. Boba Fett has never been more fun to play. It was awesome. We I were played awesome him in D3. Play. It was cool. It was so much fun to play as Boba Fett. Missiles and... Blasters and flying, it's so cool. I mean, they're gonna have so many characters now. And yeah. we have Darth Maul ready. Yeah, I got Darth Maul sitting ready, ready. like, let's do it. Of course I'm not. Thank you, Disney, for that. Uh, <laughs> in the toy box, I mean, um, lot, lots of things going on with that. Oh, yeah. Like they were talking about um, automated toy boxes. Yeah. It's a lot easier for younger kids to build toy boxes now. Yep, easier integration with that. Like, my son is finally going to be able to build stuff, and I don't have to hold his hand the whole time. <laughs> and I know a lot of you parents out there are saying, great, I need to go buy a ton more figures for another Disney Infinity game, but it's fun, and it's worth it. You'll have fun, too. Try Star to Wars. I'm saying It's that. Star Wars, yeah. If you... <laughs> no, I'll, I'll leave that out. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dishonored Definitive Edition is coming yes. out. Yes! So, what do you... I, you're obviously I'm a fan. I'm super excited about this. And again, Gearing people up for the next Dishonored, which we don't know when it's coming yet. We don't know when it's coming, but still, this is putting it out wait. there. I 
can't wait. Yeah. Here's here's my problem with some of these remakes that are happening now, especially from the Xbox One. Cool. So like if their backwards compatibility works, I own Dishonored digitally on my 360. Mm -hmm. I got it but for free. But you don't free. know when that's going to be backwards compatible. Right. So if I buy you know definitive edition or ultimate edition, whatever it's called, definitive edition. Uh, definitive. And I'm gonna, am I going to be screwed later on where it's like oh it's backwards compatible no, now? So you're getting 40, 40 you're bucks. You're going to get all the DLC for free. Sure. You're getting. Better graphics at 60 frames per second right. versus just a better polished version of right. the 360 version. So you're saying I should take a chance just buy it? If you're going to play it anyway, I'd buy it. Yeah, I want to play it. I'm I missed it, it the first time PS4 around. Because that way I can get Dishonored 2 and continue the story that way. If you missed it go. the first time around, I mean, the definitive edition seems like the addition. The, the, the addition and trust again. me, dude, yeah. the DLC is definitely worth the 40 bucks alone. Okay. Nice. Yeah, because I had a ton. There, it was a lot yeah. of really good. Like, you get another eight hours out of the game. Which just on one DLC mission. That was the game in some cases. One mission. <laughs> All right, then, then lastly, Until Dawn coming out. Um, we're all really excited about this game. I think it's, it, and I think a lot of people are saying, well, what is Until Dawn? I'm glad that you asked. <laughs> now you want to take it, or you want me to? Until Dawn is a survival horror quick time event. <laughs> it's the horror movie thing. you want to go see. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it plays out based off. So the decisions, the decisions that you make affect the outcome of the, the game. entire outcome of the game. So you you have to choose wisely how you fight or flight. Pretty much, right. you can either stay and try and fight, which you're probably not prepared to do, or you, you will. can run and hide and try and live to see the light of another day. Right. But if you make, if, depending if, on what decisions you if make, if the character dies, that's it. They're dead. They're not coming back. There's no respawns. There's no checkpoints. It plays out like a like it's, the movie. It's just like a horror movie. And there is a possibility, I've heard, to have all characters survive. So how long is a game like this going to be where if how many Let's different situations and scenarios they need to build probably for... Probably about 8 to 12 hours. We'll see, how, we'll, okay. we'll see when it comes out. But I think the replayability will be huge too. Well, yeah. All right, so we'll be talking about story modes and which is more important, your character or your enemies, right after this. Hey everybody, welcome back. We just got done talking about games of August, and now we're going to talk about what is more important, your character or your enemies um, in a game, in the story mode. And then we'll also, of course, later on we'll be talking about digital games versus physical games. My name's Will, this is Nine, yep. this is Gage. Still here. Guys, let's talk about uh, So, shooting games, or, or, or just, I'm sorry, actually story mode games. Right. You go through a game, you pick it up, um, you might buy it because you know the character is good, R is awesome in the game, right? Or he's, like, he's an iconic character that you've known for so, a while. So you like, know, you want to hear that story. Up, you're familiar with it. But sometimes it's the surprise, it's like the enemies that really stand out and yeah. capture what's more important. So, Nine, we'll start with you. What, what do you think? What is more important? What is going to drive people to go buy a game? Is it you creating know, that iconic character or what? It, and this is a cop out, but it really depends on the type of game. Okay. So, for an adventure game, like, or an adventure RPG slash game, kind of hybrid game, like God of War. God of War was a new IP when it came out. Yeah. They made a totally awesome main character. Right. He's been featured in other games, too. Now, exactly. All, all the, and I, see. I did not play the game for the enemies. I played the game for the main character in that one. But the setting, the, like the whole... The whole Greek mythology setting was awesome. What, and the, but I played the game for Kratos. Yeah, see, I, After the first one, <laughs> it was all about where the enemies went. Will, do you have anything to add? Well, I... To, <laughs> Sorry, but I have this thing. God, God of War is an interesting example because there is... A Kratos, you're right. Kratos is... I mean, Kratos iconic. was a whole new character to that universe. Sure. It, but I also thought the settings and the enemies that lived within that setting... Oh, they were made awesome. ...made the total package. But see, that's... I don't know if I could outweigh That's kind of like the role reversal of what we're talking about. Yeah. We already knew the enemies and everything were awesome because it's Ares, the God of War. That's the same. They're, they're not Athena. unique new characters. Right. They're static totally. characters. Right. They're characters we already knew. But stuff like the Minotaurs and the, the Gorgons and all that Just stuff, awesome. the designs were awesome. Right. All right. So, so Gage, let me ask you this. Okay. Oh, I had more. Well, <laughs> well, we got time. <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to you tonight. No, uh, I'm done. I'm, I'm leaving. I Gage, quit. name a game where the enemy is more important. Um, Bloodborne. Bloodborne? Really? You're picking Bloodborne? I think, well, I have, my other pick was Batman, but I, yeah, I wanted to bring I, up Bloodborne I really specifically. I that's where you were going to go. Um, well, okay, well, Batman, you know, I played Batman because I love Batman. 
But like, I play, I want to see what the enemies are going to do with Batman. Batman's cool and all, but he's just the flat black and white character that you know is going to be Batman. He has a one track mind, he's going to do his thing. The enemies are the one that's throwing the surprises. They mold the story. And not to mention, Batman's origin story kind of just stays the same. Yeah, it's always it's the never same. Never changed. Unless Everybody's, all the villains' origin stories kind of like get very up and down. Sure. But in a game like Bloodborne, where your character just runs around, kind of a nameless character that you, you name, they don't talk I named really. I'm the Ninth Lord. Sure. Uh, they don't. That was the Joker, actually. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> uh, but your enemies are what shapes the game. You know, the other hunters that are in there, right. the uh, the giant monsters, and how you play with them, and then like the other just NPCs like running around. I like this reference. So there you go. I mean, I think the enemies totally. I I would say the enemies are more important to stories and games because they're the one that shape how the game is going. Okay. They shape the main story. Right. And once again, you're watching Press Start TV. I'm Will. This is Nine. This is Gage. Yep. And we're talking about what's more important, your character or your enemies in a game. Nine, I'll throw it back to you. Coming back to you, what else did you have to add to that? Uh, well, back to my God of War thing. Once you establish a main character and you know you have a, a great main character, then you can start building on the other aspects that make the game great. The enemies. God of War 2's enemies were even better than the ones in the first one. Same with God of War 3. That fight with Poseidon was amazing. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I'm playing it now. I, I, knew, I, was I knew Poseidon was in the you, game. You should have already fought Poseidon by now. I have played it for 30 minutes. I have played the Rocket League. Yeah, yeah, Rocket League. <laughs> Epic. Yeah. Uh, Both. But yeah, um, I agree with Gage's statement on Bloodborne, too. Like, you have just the static, like, you design your own character. The character just is voiceless the what entire about, game. I mean, what about a game like Witcher? I mean, Witcher, uh, maybe it had the, not again, the most iconic front well, guy. But um, you built a story, or a game around a character that's well known in the Polish universe. Sure. The Witcher series is very popular over there. Mm -hmm. Like so popular that when Obama visited Poland they gave him a copy of Witcher 2. <laughs> like seriously, that was their gift <laughs> for the fact, Fun fact for the day. Yeah. The <laughs> um, you know, and the books are very huge over there because they're, they, I mean, they're national bestsellers. I'm trying to think of a else. game that maybe doesn't have that iconic leading character. Halo. Halo? Halo was a good start. Devil May Cry, Dante, Gears. Gears, yeah, Marcus Phoenix. Yeah, but you, now they're iconic characters. Now, but they didn't Master, start that can't way. Get any, but Master Chief is, you know. Yeah, but, but who would they sell you on Halo on with Halo One? They sell you on Master Chief. Or they sell you on the Covenant. They sold you on Master Chief. Right. Being this total hulking. And then Halo Two comes around. Who's the feature in the trailer? Master Chief. Who do you care about the Covenant at that point? No. No. You want to see what Master Chief's going to do. Uh, it didn't introduce the Arbiter. What, the what about a game like, now we haven't played it yet, but what, like No Man's Sky or a game like this where there's really no... That, that goes to my whole type of game thing. <laughs> That's going to be mostly enemy and world exploration yeah. kind of stuff because every most of the enemies in that game are probably going to end up being other players. I do, I do think that Two in, in order one. to make a um, great character iconic, you need the support of amazing enemies. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you need For a sure. supporting cast. Yeah. I mean, just like a movie, you have to have a good supporting set of characters. To make a character, you have to find a way to break a character, so the enemies right. are there to do that. Or even supporting characters do that, too, mm -hmm. because Uncharted, great cast of characters. Drake yeah. is an awesome character, and he's got that great supporting cast with Sully and Elena and yeah. um, what's the other girl's name from the second one? Well, Jenny. Jenny? <laughs> well, it was, it was, I mean, Sully is a good example because a lot of people love him oh, I love almost Sully. as much. I <laughs> love Sully. Um, yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it both. You really need both. Honestly. I think so. I think, well, I think in your story driven games, I think the villains are going to win out. I mean, the enemies are going to win out. I don't, I don't think they're all. I mean, in a story driven game, the enemies are going to win out. Yeah, I think no, they're always going to be what's more, more what more important to your story there, because you're you you because your main character it's for The Witcher, you know, once his little his quest on finding Siri is over, I mean, what's past that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Although and I haven't then, played Witcher that much, so I'm just and Dante, there. once you about four or five hours in, you pretty much know with the Devil May Cry series what you're getting into. From there on out, it's like what new enemies. Yeah, his story would be into. done. The enemies are what keeps it going. All right. Well, let us know what you think. Of course, you can always hit us up at YouTube.com/psvgtv. And when we get back, we're going to be talking about physical games versus digital games, and we'll see what you guys think about that. Right when we get back. Boom. Hey everybody, welcome back. We just got done talking about uh, your character or your enemies, which is more important in My a character. story. So uh, that enemy. was a great conversation also <laughs> with the games of August. But now we're going to talk about physical games versus digital games, which is more important, why does it matter, so forth and so on. I'm Will, this is Nine, yep. this is Gage, I you're watching Press Start TV. 
Okay, let's talk about this. Uh, Gage, I'll start with you. So, uh, so studies show that gamers are still, about 29% of gamers are still buying physical copies of games, compared to about 25% digital, 36% like don't care, or in the middle somehow. Yeah. Um, most, most product is being delivered still through physical, of course. Sure. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I still buy physical games. I also buy digital games, you know, like the indie, indie not indie games, uh, obviously. Uh, super, um, you know, discounted games, like if they come off like 90% yeah, sure. off, you know, I'll pick them up, whatever. Um, I think I'd rather have physical copies of games because, you know, I, I like the ability just to go around trading games. Um, although I don't trade in a lot of games. I know we're a special case because we play a lot of games for you guys. Well, you can let people borrow it. Sure. You know. Another thing. Um, I think you get more versatility having a physical copy of a game, although I'm not... If something happens to your system or, or your accounts or, you know, fill in the blank, I'm sorry. Well, you can, you can usually get back your digital games that way, too. Uh, it depends. Yeah. Some, some, Sony's not very good about that kind of thing. Microsoft's got a better program there. Sony's got, like, some weird thing going on with them about their yeah, digital games. Well. Um, it works. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not afraid to have digital games. I'm not afraid. I have a big digital library through EA Access, through Games with Gold, through PlayStation Plus, stuff like that. You know, I've got those games. Um, so digital is fine with me. I think I'd still rather have physical yeah. games. Nine, what are your thoughts on this? I love my physical games. Yeah, I mean. I can't. I grew up with physical cartridges for all my games. I've just, it, it's embedded into my brain sure. to always have a physical copy. Hey. It's a hard copy if anything ever goes wrong with my system. Sure. I mean, granted, I mean, with the way digital games are working, they've got the cloud backups and your saves and all that stuff, so it's still there. You just have to re download the it becomes entire a thing. But what if you don't have the internet? Well, if you don't have the internet, you can't use an Xbox One. So. You're probably not using next gen consoles anyway. <laughs> yeah. But what if you have to go on vacation? But what if you're like, you know, you go off and you just want to play your game? You don't have a game. I have a thing, and it's a, it's a weird thing, but I love the feeling of a new case. You like that smell that comes out of the case? I love the smell. It's like the new car smell for me. <laughs> it's so wonderful. It's By the way, this is Nine you. talking. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm Will. This is, that, just, <laughs> this is everything that's wrong with Nine in like 30 seconds. No, 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 that's that's cool. That's no, that. And one game that really hit me like right in nostalgia was The Witcher 3. Okay. That game smelled the best? It, it not smelled the best. It just came with. Now? It came with so much stuff. It came with the fold-out oh, map. This is O2. Uh, the thank you, the personal thank you from CD Projekt Red for purchasing and supporting their game. Yeah. And you look like a crazy person. Um, I'm lying. Sorry. <laughs> it came with the the actual instruction manual, which you never see anymore. Sure. Yeah, sure. That's that's the really. The disc cool. stickers for the game and the 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 backstory of the first two games and the breakdown of Geralt. You just don't get all that stuff with the. You don't. Yeah. You don't get any of that stuff with the digital. It's a good point, you get though. some of those things. You have to really look you for it. You cannot get stickers. No, you don't but get stickers. It, it's a good point to bring up about the physical, to make a case for the physical side of things, is all those extra things that you I can love put it. in there. I love it. Plus, and the weird thing right now with Master Chief and Halo 5, the collector's edition only coming with a digital copy is weird. They just came out and said you they, can take your... They're working on it. Well, no, they, you can do this now. You can take your digital redemption code into, like, I think, Microsoft stores or participating retailers and, and, trade and it in swap for it out copy. for a physical copy of the See, game. See, that's just weird. Why would they do that in the first But the, place? the backlash of only having a digital copy of the game in a $250 uh, dollar co a bundle means you're paying for the bundle and not the game. Right. You're basically, like, you're stuck with the game forever. You can't trade it in whatsoever kind of thing. My take, uh, I'm, I'm also a uh, physical, gu physical guy. <laughs> He's uh, physical. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I mean, for all the same reasons you guys just mentioned, I mean, I like having the actual copy of the game. I like seeing it sitting up on my shelf. You know, oh, if I, I didn't it. want to let somebody borrow it, I could. Um, you know, usually, like, hey, I need my game back. You know, you can go buy it yourself, whatever the case. I can trade it in. I can get something for it. Um, yeah, and, and not to mention all the extra things that you can put into the game case. Uh, which is cool, and you know, if I take my system somewhere and I plug it in uh, wherever I'm just going on a trip, or whatever, I just take my games with me, plug it right in. Sure. That's the one thing I like digital for. I don't have to carry 15 you know, packages of. Yeah, but some games you need internet connections for. And, and you right. know, it, which is weird. It's it's a necessary yeah. thing to have the physical copy for sure because you know you got like the military. I mean, that's a big deal for yeah, them. Yeah, their internet not going to let them download games. You, you have you have to in in. A lot of people, believe it or not, even in this day and age, don't have the internet. I mean, or I mean, only use the internet for the, like, minimum, like just it's checking not email, fast enough. or you have, have Time Warner cable and hate it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but I will say, I would rather buy indie games through a digital platform. Yeah. 
So like the okay. physical copy of Terraria, you wouldn't pick up? No, I would rather buy the digital one. Sure. So we're talking about physical games for digital games. I think we're on the same page here. We're all uh, more on the physical. I really side wish of No Man's Sky it. would come to a physical copy. Is it only digital? It's only digital. Okay. Now I do like digital games though for like for some of those indie experiences. Like well, yeah, that. most of oh. your indie games are coming digital. Like, like smaller games like Binding of Isaac and all those like yeah. half uh, like half a gig yeah. kind of stuff. Miles. I mean, they download fairly fast now. And right. you can get them in an instant. You don't have to go all the way to the store and come all the way back. Yeah. Plus, I mean, a physical copy of that game, not really worth 60 not, bucks. Not yeah. worth, well, <laughs> a lot of games out there now are probably not worth 60 bucks. There's a lot of Superman 64 was not worth and 60 bucks. And a lot of the bucks. independent uh, game stores out there, not the corporate uh, game stores, but the independent game stores, will do a lot of extra stuff for um, people that pre-order and all that kind of stuff. So you get some extra things when you when you get those things. So, you know, just throwing that out there. Nice plug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we always want to know what you think. Please let us know. Hit us up on YouTube.com slash PSVGTV. By the way, a quick shout out to Mr. Dougie Vini for joining us last week uh, from Good Game Bureau. That was a lot of fun. In his honor, we didn't talk about Nintendo this week. We did not. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. Totally uh, trolled him on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, check out Good Game Grow. You can check us out at uh, pressstartvg.com uh, soon. That's coming soon, by the way. But you can also check us out, and I'm here to tell you now, at pressstarttv.com. <gasps> All things Press Start TV, you can check that out. Uh, we'll have that. If it's not already launched, it'll be launching right around the corner. You can get our Let's Plays. You can get our podcast. You can get all that stuff. A page dedicated to me. Uh, YouTube.com slash PSVGTV. Uh, once again, thank you guys so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Till next time, see you. Later. Bye. Bye.